you're running wrong. And I know what you're gonna say. No, no, I've been running my whole life. Look, just because you've been doing something your whole life doesn't mean you've been doing it correctly. This topic became super important to me when I decided to run a marathon. Yes, a 26.2 full marathon. And I was, I was actually sober when I made this decision. It was one of those things that I wanted to cross off my life bucket list. And while training for my marathon, I ran, huh? that's right. See what you did there. Into a different style of running. During my weekend long runs, I would hit mile 11, and yes, you can get to mile 11 too, and my knees would start to hurt. The pain was so intense and centralized right beneath my kneecap. It became so bad, I contemplated calling an Uber. Like, so what's up, man, where are you coming from? Where are you going? Oh, like, yeah, like, or worse, walking. The ultimate fail for marathon training. I had to figure something out. So I started beta testing my running style to avoid the pain by positioning my body one way and then another. And then after a few miles and many, many awkward stances, I figured out the optimal movements so that I wouldn't have pain. And then, like engaging the hyperdrive on the Millennium Falcon, no more pain. The next weekend, I ran 19 miles without any pain whatsoever. 19 freaking miles. Did I invent some sort of brand new running style? I mean, I'd like to think so, but I honestly doubt it. So let's bring in science to figure out exactly what I had just figured out. Let's go back, like way back. To the time in history when our ancestors, Homo erectus, figured out how to run. This epic moment in time was a little over two million years ago. And one thing we can safely assume is that they didn't have Nike strapped to their feet. So how did these early humans just do it? Good one, Nick. Since the running shoe industry wouldn't be invented for another 1,960,000 years, the earliest humans ran barefoot which is a very different running style than what we are used to today. In the modern age, we are much more familiar with a style that reflects the addition of cushy foam air-filled soles. While these shoes were actually designed to correct runner strides and reduce stress, they might be doing the opposite. In fact, cushy soles are not a prerequisite for running very long distances, for example. The Japanese marathon monks run over 50 miles a day for 100 days, and only with straw handmade running shoes. And the Tarahumara people of Northwest Mexico have a tradition of running 200 miles in just under two days using minimalistic footwear that looks a lot like flip flops. Now, I want you to try an experiment. All right, so here's the experiment that I was telling you guys about of what you wanna do in a place where there's grass, because I'm gonna ask you to take your shoes off and run in the grass. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna jog around a little bit here and show you how I run normally. You run a little clunky. If you run with your shoes off the same way that you run with your shoes on, it feels very weird and it, and it hurts actually. I'm not gonna be doing this for too much longer. The running style that you have created with shoes on is extremely painful when your shoes are off. So as you clunk around smashing your feet on the ground, you realize, you know, there, there might be a better way for this. In order to avoid this new pain, you are forced to change your body posture and body movements, just as I did during my marathon training. This new form has your foot hitting the ground directly underneath of your hips, with your back straight, not slouching forward, your shoulders should be low and loose, with your hands slightly open as if you're holding a potato chip without crushing it. You'll be looking forward with your eyes scanning the horizon with a straight neck and a level chin. And for the record, because this comes up in so many running forums, it actually doesn't matter what part of your foot hits first. The heel, the mid, the toe, it just doesn't matter. So as long as your foot is landing directly underneath of you, this is the correct form. So the next time you go for a run or if you're training for a long distance race, try what I call the poop in the pants method. It's not only the form of our early running ancestors, but also the form that will save your body from injury in the long run. Good one, bro. Thanks for watching. And did you try this ancient running method out at home? Did it work for you? How does it feel? Let me know in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe. New videos every week.